Welcome to the Learn to Learn Show. I'm your host, Francis Tapon. I'm here with Gary Arndt. He is the host of the Everything Everywhere Daily Podcast. How are you? It's nice to have you back again, Gary. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, I want to talk to you about, let's start off with your shift. You made a dramatic shift in your career. You went from being a travel blogger extraordinaire, top in the industry, uh, traveled to well over 100 countries, and uh, lots of World Heritage sites, as you, I think you became known, and you were a photographer, a travel photographer, award win, award winning. By the way, that's some thunder here in South Africa. <laughs> um, and my question to you is, you know, how has been the transition as far as uh, from a business perspective? Uh, what's your What's your take? Oh, from a business perspective, it's been fantastic. I'm making far more money now uh, than I ever, ever, ever did uh, with travel. Um, even before, so uh, for people that don't know, in uh, when the pandemic hit, it really hit me pretty hard because all the contracts I had to do photography or influencer things all disappeared. I had an event that I was going to run that got canceled. Uh, traffic to the website dried up to almost nothing. Uh, so I lost about 95% of my income in a span of about two weeks in March of 2020. But even before the pandemic started, I had... I was growing ever more doubtful about where blogging was going. And the reason is when I started my website back in 2006, and I started traveling in 2007, I just wrote stuff. I wrote observations that I had on the road. Um, I wasn't trying, I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about SEO. I would use uh, puns or song titles for the, t you know, for articles um, and just wrote whatever, you know, I was, I, I was seeing and my thoughts about the places I visited and that's all it was. And people went to your website and they subscribed to your website, usually through an RSS feed and they read it every day. And then over time that got shifted to social media. And now it was expected that people would find your site through social media. And then that changed because places like Facebook, they first encouraged you, oh, grow your following on Facebook. And then they got rid of your organic reach and said, oh, well, now you got to advertise to reach these people that followed you. And then over time, more and more traffic blogs began coming from Google to a point where it's well over 90% now. And what you're seeing is people are writing content for Google, not for people. They're not writing their thoughts and opinions of traveling. Uh, this whole travel influencer thing has developed, which I think is very shallow. It's just p p pictures of people that are highly staged and it doesn't even matter where in the world they are. They're like, you know, drinking coffee wistfully or they're on a beach somewhere and it doesn't matter where it is. They're not giving thoughts and opinions about the places that they, they visit. And, uh, I just kind of saw the whole thing, you know, kind of falling apart. There was no point to it you know, visiting these places and learning about them and what makes them different from each other uh, was, was not a part of it at all. So when the pandemic hit, I began this podcast, which, and I made a conscious decision to not do a travel podcast because just from a strict business standpoint, I realized uh, having talked to friends that had different types of websites, they always got more traffic than travel websites did. And the reason is people don't follow travel in the same way that you follow sports or technology or politics or celebrity gossip or anything that's changing constantly. Travel is just something that you do and you may be interested in it when you're about to go on a trip, but you know, the Coliseum, it's still there. It's going to be there in a hundred years. Not much really changes. And the things that do change are like a hotel opens or something. And nobody cares about that because you're not going to stay at every hotel. All you care about is I go to a place, I'm looking for a hotel, is it affordable and in a good location? And whether it's new or not doesn't, doesn't really matter. So the shift to what I call travel adjacent, where I can still talk about the things that I learned and discovered from my travels, but it's not explicitly a travel show, uh, in hindsight was a, a brilliant decision because it, it vastly expanded the audience of people that would consume that content. Got it. Okay. And what about the time that you take compared to the time you were taking as a travel blogger? So obviously the bulk of travel, at least I think you would agree with me, is consumed by the travel itself and, you know, going and getting on buses and trains. You're not actually being able to capture much, create much content. It, you know, in other words, in a 24 hour day, you may be only spending while you're traveling, maybe at best two or three hours 
that's it creating content versus when you're podcasting you could spend eight hours or nine hours does that make sense what do you think oh yeah i spend far more time um writing now than i ever did before i'm writing basically a 2000 word term paper every day right um so i've written since the show has started well over two million words and so yeah that that's definitely true but there's been a corresponding payoff as well because I'm making far more than I ever did before uh, with travel blogging. And there's still enormous potential for growth. I think I could still increase the, the audience of my show tenfold uh, without too much difficulty based on other independent podcasts that I know that are in a similar genre to mine. So I know that's definitely possible and, and potentially even bigger than that. So this has the potential to become something that is very large. Uh, you know, I'm really just getting started. Yeah, I mean, it's already pretty large. I, I think there's a, a definite limit. And especially with the changes that Google's now making, where they're sending less and less traffic to websites. What their goal, any anything they send to a, out from Google is at the end of the day, a bug that needs to be fixed. What they want to do and what they're starting to do with more AI is answer questions right on the page and nothing will ever be sent to another website or very little will at least. So being in an environment where I don't have to worry about pandering to algorithms, whether it's from Facebook or whether it's from Google, and I can just create something for people to enjoy is far more satisfying to me than you know the alternative. And I know that I am doing it because the feedback I get from the podcast is unlike anything I've ever gotten with blogging. Like it's well and truly I've, I've gotten some messages that, you know, have been really heartwarming and I never got that, you know, taking pictures of places. You have some bloggers like a uh, nomadic Matt, for example, who would might spend eight hours a day actually doing this, the stuff and might equal, or maybe have similar income. But then again, it's, it's a different, it's a different thing. He's not really traveling as much potentially as somebody like you who actually went out there and, and did a lot more, I think. But in order to make the same amount of income, you have to pretty much put in the hours otherwise. Yeah. And I don't even know, I, I, I have no insight into how he's doing, but, you know, just subscribing to his newsletter and seeing the, the projects he has going on. I think he took a big hit too in the pandemic. Um, so I don't know uh, how he's doing. Um, but I think he's also suffering from the same thing that if you live by Google, you die by Google. And they've been, they had some massive changes to their algorithm this year. And I think it has primarily benefited large companies. If you're an independent person, I don't think it matters how well traveled you are at all. I think skills in SEO are going to do you far more than actually being a well traveled, interesting and thoughtful person ever will. Uh, and that's the problem with the entire business right now. I remember you had this idea of going to Rome and seeing some of the, un, you know, the unvisited sites of Rome and doing a big tour. And then your podcast hits so big and you got so many millions of downloads that you're like, oh, I need, a, I need a lot more capacity. And so you have to rethink all that stuff. Where are you right now with that? Um, yeah, that's, that, that, that kind of explains it. So when I first proposed it, I got a flood of interest in going to Rome far more than I ever got, say, with my blog uh, when I did trips. And so I think I had like 100 people that, you know, signed up as kind of like a, you know, I'm interested in this within 48 hours. This is when the show is like maybe 10% of what it is today. And I soon realized that from a time uh, and money perspective in terms of my return, so at this point taking 10 days off to, to lead a tour would almost not be financially worth it given how much the podcast is bringing in. So then I began thinking, well, what if I just like did a river cruise and just like reserved the whole boat or a big chunk of it. Um, and so that's something I'm looking at right now. It's been difficult getting a hold of uh, a river cruising company. Uh, that's been the biggest thing. I want to do something where, you know, maybe some sort of partnership that involves advertising on the show in addition to promoting the cruise and signing everyone up. Um, and the other thing is just time. My pot, I'm still the only person who works to produce this show. I write it, I record it, I do everything. And so because it's still a one person operation, 
uh, it's been difficult finding time to do these other things that could be relation, uh, related to the show just because every day my top priority is I got to get out the episode. What about AI? Could it help you? Not really. Um, so there are certain topics that I tackle that are kind of very large and amorphous. So I wanted to do an episode on Roman religions and it's a very amorphous subject. They had all these gods and all these festivals and all these different things. And so I, I went into chat GPT and I said, you know, uh, briefly describe Roman. And they did like a 10 point thing where they kind of grouped it into these topics. The problem with AI is that it almost always, and I do mean always gets facts wrong, like, and sometimes profoundly wrong. Sometimes it's they, they attribute something to the wrong person or they get the wrong date. Um, so using AI to do research really at this stage does not work very well at all.